Get in the cart. Right at us. Four. The best in the business, Roger Cleveland. Can't wait to get back to Chicago in this one. This is Party of Four, a Mistwood Golf Club podcast. We have had a lot of amazing guests on this podcast, but none oh other God. carry the anticipation of today's episode, Andy. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I've got two questions, though. First, what's our count in Germany? Uh, we we're up to 207 listeners in Germany. Hello. Hello to, to all of our 207 German friends out there. And then to our next guest, do you want to introduce him first? Because I got a question for him. We should. This is Ben Hutchison alongside Andy Michelson. And our guest today is Director of Instruction, John Platt. Say hi, John. Thanks, guys, for having me. <laughs> I'm glad I can finally make the 29th, or is this the 30th episode? We're right around there. All right, so we got to the bottom. Are, you, first, are we going to wave back up? Now, who goes back number one after this? <laughs> first know. question, yes or no, have you ever even listened to our podcast? I have listened. Wow. No, I have never thought one that. Thing. Wow. I've never listened from, really, from the very beginning <laughs> to the very end, because my drive to work here is not that long, <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> wow, I'm honored. I, I would have thought no. You can pause these things and pick up where you left <laughs> off. So a couple drives, you could get it done. I know, but I sometimes forget. <laughs> we were going to start with what was it like hitting with wooden golf clubs? <laughs> <laughs> Andy thought that was a good jumping off Wooden point. golf clubs, spiked shoes. You said I can't swear on this? <laughs> we try not to. Okay, we can bleep well. it out, though. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I do have wooden golf clubs. In my garage. I have not played with them. <laughs> well, what do you think? I uh, use wooden head drivers like Tony Penna driver back oh yeah. in high school days. Nice. A few years back. And uh, with the blot of balls. So it was um, it was a lot tougher to basically control the ball back then. That makes sense. That makes sense. Like as now, now you can hit it anywhere on the face and it kind of goes somewhere in the general direction unless you hit off the hosel. So how much how much easier, obviously, from the professional standpoint, the professional part of the game, it, it seems like, you know, like I tell people, on my best day, I'm 10,000th in the world. I right. would put it out there, right? There's so many better players at the higher level. I just think, not necessarily that the scores are that much lower, but the, the amount of players that are just good. Don't you think that has... Almost everything to do with technology kind of brings everybody into the mix. Correct. I think it bring the average players to better players. Now we're talking, let's talk about the average good player, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of these guys, they're, they're able to now become better, a little bit better ball strikers. Mm -hmm. So I think that's helping bringing all this big pool of players in. But it's always the certain players who make it to the ones we see on TV. Mm -hmm. And those guys, and the bottom line is, you, you know it. Mm -hmm. You either have it or you don't have it, right? Yeah. Now, on tour, there's guys who have it and guys that don't have it. Mm -hmm. Club pros, you know. Mm -hmm. Andy has it. Frank has it. I don't have it. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, it's basically, you got to have it. And those guys that are out there, so it may bring the ball striking. Because we can stay on the range and just watch these guys all hit, they all hit good shots, right? Sure. But it's the guys who just, who can handle the pressure that who have it. So even though there's tons of players out there are spending lots of money to try to get onto these tours, okay? But bottom line is there's just certain guys who have it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So, speaking of have it, you had a pretty good finish here in the yeah. Illinois Senior Open, top five. Yep. So, I know you're not really preparing for it as in hitting <laughs> balls, right? How do you get your mind right around, I mean, I know what my thought pattern is, but what's your thought pattern as far as, like, being able to feel like you belong, feeling like you can compete in that field when you know that there's other guys that – have a little bit more of a focused effort on their games. Right. And that's actually a great point because, um, and I actually thought, I actually thought about this before. So, cause really on, you know, Saturday we were at the taste of Juliet. So mm -hmm. we were there <laughs> too long. We weren't practicing much. We weren't practicing. <laughs> nope. And then on Sunday I went to some car show <laughs> and I sat in a chair and I pretty much had a few 
adult beverages, right? Yep. And then my daughter come home. So then when we brought these dogs to a brewery, when we kind of hung out there for a little bit, then everybody from the car show came to my house Sunday night and finally left at 10 o'clock and I had the first tea time at 7.30. So I didn't get any practice then on Sunday like I wanted to. <laughs> but it's funny like you said, because what I did this time is usually at most of these events now, I've, I've, there's always things going on. Yeah, what's going on at the house? What's from, going on okay, at work? So from the outside, when I watch, when I watch you at events, you're a little bit quicker, you're a little bit fidgeter, you know, you're, you're, like, you're kind of like a little, a little bit more antsy. I, I, right. Not that I'm no, no, calling that's you funny out. You but, said it. No, no, that's what it is. That so, but this one here, I said, I, I just go, you know what? I kind of got it. I was talking to myself while I was playing. It was really funny. I was just kind of talking to myself and just kind of basically picturing the shots that I kind of hit. One way or two way conversation? Uh, that's question two, answer. Sad, sad part is there was two ways. <laughs> I was playing with Mark Labiak, the pro at Ruth Lake, yeah. the first round, and he was probably like, what the heck is he doing? <laughs> anyway, but we're out there and it's like, you know, my putting stroke, was it's always been bad, as you know, but it's gotten better. As a matter of yeah. fact, the tip you gave me yesterday, I think I may start I'm yeah. going to call it right now. I'm going to win again soon. And yeah. what we're doing is I had better, I had a better feel for putting. Mm -hmm. So just went out there and I'm thinking, you know, I know I can beat these guys and get against these guys. Totally. I, I, I keep it and play as good as anybody. So when I did, I just felt like, you know, what? I'm just going to think about golf. I didn't think about, you know, Billy for a 10 o'clock lesson, this or yeah, that, you know, I blocked off the two days. I know I didn't have to do anything mm -hmm. here. Um, all my plants were watered at home. So I was, good. <laughs> I was good for two days. And to be honest with you, that's what it was. I just kind of went in there with a fresh mind, knowing that I can beat them. And basically, I mean, I only had two bad shots the whole time. I may have a few more better breaks and yeah, you know, I'm playing, you know, trying to beat Mike small and Mike's one of our top players. Right. And, mm -hmm. it's, and Mike probably plays a little more than I do. And you got a couple other guys up there on the top that seem probably to play a little bit more golf than I do, but you know, it's, it's fun. It was really fun and it was good to be competitive again. So along the same lines, my, my best week that I feel like I've I ever had was at the national assistance championship. That was 2015. I shot 18 under for the week and I can remember sitting on it. I have the player's packet. I'm sitting on the beach at Jensen Island or whatever right there, right by Port St. Lucie. And I'm going through the player's packet. And I remember looking at the last place and it was $500. And I'm like, oh, sweet. I've, my in-laws covered my room and I paid less than that to get down here. And they gave me a hundred dollar gift card when I checked in. So I was like doing the math. I'm like, oh, I can still come out like a hundred dollars ahead. I'll be fine. <laughs> right. So I'm having like two or three beers, just, just sitting there relaxing. And my mind is completely like just, so underwhelmed right there. Just Were sitting those there players like, included in the budget? Uh, no, eh, close. <laughs> I still had some wiggle room. I had a hundred bucks wiggle room. So I'm just like looking through this packet. Like my expectations couldn't have been lower. And then I went in with a clear mind because I was basically on vacation. I remember that that year was a grind for us. Um, and just went in with very low expectations. Felt like it was a vacation. But voila, you play the best golf of your life. So Pounding, I guess the moral of the story between us is like sitting there and pounding range balls is not necessarily going to get it done. If you can get your mind right in the right kind of mental way, and that's what you're seeing on tours. These guys are, you know, they're wearing those woot bands, they're getting rested well, they're playing nine holes here and there. I mean, I see it in practice rounds all the time, and I think it's like because these kids see – somebody else doing it. And so they think they need to copy it, like dropping balls in nine different locations right. and practice round on every single hole. What are you learning? Well, the, I think what helped me is because on Friday, you know, we had the member guest here, right? And yeah. so after the first wave, I haven't seen the preserve the medals, whatever it's called now, but great shape, great golf yeah. course, Jamie Nito. You guys ran a great, great event. Um, I actually drove it, mm -hmm. which was kind of quick. So I kind of drove it. So then, even though I didn't play the first day, I felt like I played it because I kind of looked at some spots where you could hit it and can hit it. And I think that helped a lot because there's times where you go into a place blind, which sometimes it's good because you don't know where the bad shots are. You just mm -hmm. get up there and just hit it, right? But I kind of knew where to try to hit it everywhere and asked a few questions and kind of went with that. I had a fun little thing back when uh, I was playing Hooters golf. I, I would watch... Uh, Tim Simpson, because back in the day he was an awesome player. Right? Awesome. Back in your day, right? He was he was awesome, and uh, was coming back from some type of surgery. But it was the year before he was going out on to play on the senior tour, so he wanted to play some competitive golf. And I would see him each week walk the course from reverse, 
So he would go from the 18th green and literally walk the course in reverse. So he was looking at what he needed to do from the green back. And so many people look at a golf course in just a different way, or they need to go play it or whatever. But he, the way he did that was just awesome. And I'm like, well, that makes sense. The best players in the world think about the golf course in reverse. They think about it from the green back, not from the team right. forward. I just thought that was really cool. It's a good, yeah, it's a good perceptive, you know, perception to kind of look at that way. And, and also, that's another way to tell people how you read green sometimes. I see you, you look at the green, you stand behind, you look back towards the fairway. Yeah. And that'll kind of show you where the lay of the land is. Yeah, old school contouring is they're trying to get the water off the green. So usually it's back to front and right. tipped off on the sides. Well, two things I appreciate. One, that you care about the lawn and the plants, keeping them <laughs> in good health. I know head pro Frank Hoenadel appreciates that as well. Second thing so is these nerds. Okay. So these nerds have me on in this group thread <laughs> and I've made it known. I haven't cut my grass in 13 years. These guys it's therapeutic, man. These guys on Sunday afternoons, it's they, they send back and forth like their lawn marks and like the flowers they plant. Like give oh me Lord. a break. Striping. Like, please. Fresh I, mulch. I think just so they, they make it less weird. They include me in on their chat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> They'd be really weird, like if two guys are just going back and forth about their lawn patterns. For some reason, they include me in. I'm like, come on, guys. We're just trying. So to- who has the best lawn pattern? No, Frank. He has a good method. Does Frank he actually do it, the- or does he make? Yeah, Lisa no, go no. Up they he take pride it. in it, dude. These he's guys got, take pride he's in it. He's got rose bushes, it. and oh the striping is very important. <laughs> Let me guess. That. After he does the lawnmower, does he complain about his back hurting? No, he hasn't done that. Okay, he just said he enjoys it, which he didn't expect yeah. as a homeowner. I don't think so. That's cool, and I know we talked about mulch and getting the best deals and everything like that. So, <laughs> yeah, very people important. every year you get that two dollars a bag. You know, yep. you have to go there three oh different times to pick up. Dude, my parents bag. just had the same conversation with me two days ago. John, come on, you're younger than that. What? They're, they're <laughs> raving about this two dollar bag deal they had at Menards. Yeah, absolutely, it's a great deal. <laughs> Instead so of getting, like, I did. I did oh, almost a hundred no. bags, so I did over a hundred bags. So <laughs> oh, that was no. basically two hundred bucks off my mat. I went to jail up. I think that's two hundred. Yeah. And um, <laughs> you know, if I had the stuff hauled in, like it was five, probably 600 bucks. yeah, five wow. six hundred bucks, and you know, saving money. So that was one thing. I appreciate that. The second thing was, you really don't get to play a lot. I know you've kind of like you guys beat around that a little bit, but like you don't. You're teaching a lot. You're doing a lot of clinics. You're doing clinics out there today. So your mind must always be kind of spinning golf wise because there's different things you're working on with each different golfer. Right. So you don't want to mess you up if you're trying to teach them like, Hey, this is the way you should do it. But you're also tailoring it to their own situation. Correct. And it's almost like, I don't close my eyes when you see a really bad swing, but it's like <laughs> you have it right. You So really let's think it's gotten to the point where I've seen so many different golf swings. It doesn't matter. And then you see such good golf swings, you know, you look at Andy's swings, Frank's swing, mine, and that, and there's guys who can all play. They all have different golf swings, right? The one thing I think that does help me is when I do play now is I do chip a lot with the kids, you know what I mean? So I do a lot of chipping, so I always feel like I can get up and down from anywhere. That So I do that part right there. But um, I ain't going to lie. When you see somebody who has a tendency to kind of hit it off the thick part of that iron right there, the housel, it's – that's like a disease because when one guy starts it out at eight o'clock, it seems like the whole day I the got noodle comes going. out, the board comes oh out, the Lord. box, bag. The box yeah. comes out, the pylon. That's the so, pylon's really good. <laughs> so, I've given this compliment to JP before. I think he's one of the best at getting from A to Z the fastest. What is so you talk about? You've seen all these swings, right? Correct. You. What is kind of the method in order to see it that fast? Because I know like. If I'm looking at somebody, I'm getting better at it, but it's like it's the hardest thing is to go and the simplest stuff. Like if a guy is sending it in one direction, obviously you're working from contact back or face right. back. But like what are those little like even some of your better players, what's kind of the balance to not screw them up but still be getting them on a road to improvement? For the better players, you can kind of just change a few things here and there, okay? Because they're going to find a way to to hit it good if you get them in the right direction. That's the thing. Everybody, I hate the, this is a kind of a secret. Everybody can't break 100, okay? <laughs> so what happens here is that, but guys that shoot 120, you can maybe get them down to be able to shoot 100 or 90 or 95. Yeah. Because you know, there's a, a, a bad thing called the comfort zone. So it's like if you have a certain score, even though your swing can change, if you don't get a chance to play a lot, you're still going to kind of shoot that comfort zone shot, right? And what I kind of find out is I find out right away is, was this guy athletic? 
you know, mm -hmm. did they play sports when they were younger? You know, we get CEOs of companies that come in here who never don't have an athletic ball in their body, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe they're going to have a hard time, you know, becoming a better player because it's such a hand-eye coordination type of game, you know? And mm -hmm. if you have a guy who's been shooting 100 who comes, who's been playing for 30 years, well, it's probably tough to get him to lower his to score down a little bit. You can, but it's just a matter of how it happens. So I test to see what their athletic ability is. I'll kind of just joke around. I'll throw a ball at them, and depending how they catch it, kind of determines to me how much quicker this guy can become a better player. That's cool. Okay, so and idea. especially with younger players, you know, yeah. especially like really juniors, you know, you get these kids and you how much how much does that drive you? Know, I think the one thing that sticks in my craw the most, and it's it's a sad set statement on on junior golf it's good because so many people are getting into junior golf but yeah. when i ask a when i ask a 12 year old what other sports have you played and they say none isn't that doesn't that yeah, blow your brutal. mind yeah. like like you just when we grew up you, you're you leave the house at 8 a.m and your parents have no idea where you're at until 5 p.m i mean my god i mean <laughs> i mean i back when i was young which way yeah. way 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 back then you know playing golf with me wasn't the most manly sport in the world so I actually wrestled also in high school. So I played golf. I played baseball all the way up. Then I got into golf, and I wrestled. Then my senior year, I also played park district basketball. Why I wrestled at the same yeah. time. So it's kind of like, and then you have all these kids. Now you're right. We want them playing more sports. Everything. Okay? Play Your son, everything. for example, mm -hmm. that kid rips it off the tee, and you can see how he rips it in baseball too. Those are two good. Those are two good sports. People say I don't want a baseball player in golf. My, no, you want your hips rotating like you do in baseball. My my kids don't or at least my son right now, doesn't have a week off. He goes from baseball season now into golf. Then uh, his basketball season is going to start in September. Like, I just, I think, ultimately, I think they're going to be golfers, right? I'm going to give them every single tool. Right. Right. They're working with people like you. They're working with all of us. They're ultimately going to be golfers. But right. in order for them to be the best they can possibly be, they have to be athletes first. You have to be an athlete, athlete You have to first. be athlete first. And yeah. it's also good to be into an organized team game. Yeah. When you get certain juniors who all they do is play golf and hit everything kind of basically just golf, 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 they're a little tougher. They're maybe sometimes become unteachable. Sure. Yeah. But when kids play, play um, team events, they are so much more coachable when you get them in one-on-one -on -one situation. And I think too, there's some there's some beauty to the game of golf as far as if you're playing team sports and you're playing a, a sport that's literally by yourself. The right. the beauty of golf, for me, that I see it in my kids is that as they play more sports, right, politics might come into play. This coach likes this kid more than that kid, right? Right. But in golf, if you shoot 39 and I shoot 41, you're better than me. Right. And I need to work harder to get to you, but it's on individual me. sport. It's not on my coach. Yeah. It's not on anybody else. It's me working right. harder than you. And that's what, that's just the beauty of the game. And I think is actually driving more kids to the game. Right. We filled up four PJ Junior league teams in 48 hours. That, right. that got out of hand. It was absolutely hand. crazy. It's, it's, it's cool to see what's happening in junior golf. And I think it's because of just, the other sports kind of getting crazy, getting crazy. And it's one thing about golf too. It's like, once you get them, then you got to have, and then, you know, they know it's an individual sport. Then what they have to learn is take accountability, mm -hmm. you know, cause oh, I, these gosh. juniors, it's, oh, I get so tired of hearing it. And they talk, they I hear every excuse in the world. It's like, how about you just suck that day? Okay. How about you just did not play well that day? Don't tell me that this kid was driving you nuts or I yeah. got a bad break here and there. You know, you know what I've said before too, is magically, the number one player on the college team doesn't blame his coach, but the number five player does a lot. Right. Exactly. You know? And they could play like, like, for instance, this last week, I, I was in four divots. I haven't been in four divots in two years, right? In this yeah. tournament. <laughs> and I always remember the story with Tom Watson. Who's the guy that caddy that died, but oh, uh, Bruce Edwards, Bruce Edwards, who caddied for uh, Greg Norman and Tom Watson their mm -hmm. days. And they asked him a question. What's the difference between the two? And he says, Greg Norman walks up to a ball in a divot and says, Oh geez, I just got screwed. And, you know, and he starts MF and this and that and there. He goes, Tom Watson walked up to the ball and said, watch this shot. Yeah. Watch this shot. <laughs> and I actually said it to myself. I'm telling right. you, last day I'm going, I mean, how corny is that? And it's like, I'm on there. I go, yeah, I'm going to hit a good shot here. And I hit this six iron that I probably, if it goes another three feet left, I probably make triple, but I made par. <laughs> <laughs> Worked out. For the younger crowd or the young parent crowd, this whole individual versus team dynamic, I think uh, Cars and Lightning McQueen would be a perfect example. 
He was his own race car. He kicked out two pit crews. I thought you were by the end. It, I thought you're hold on bringing hold on. it back on the road. And I guess you we are, are bringing on the road. Yeah. But then by the end, he's like, "Hey, I need my road. team with me." So that team dynamic <laughs> is tremendous. I mean, Andy and I were talking about this yesterday. Just the whole you're a golfer, you succeed and fail on your own. I mean, you know, they have coaches and everything mm-hmm. else along the way, but being part of a team and success as a team, I think that builds some individual. You know, just you you handle things a lot better when you know what can happen. Right. I mean, we manage that all winter that with our our cap program. You, it's a fine balance between the competitive nature, it's the supporting nature, it's the competitive nature of a team. But at the end of the day, when we cut them loose at the end of May, it's like, all right, guys, it's on you now. Do your thing. Right. We, we, my we, golf we've team. given you all yeah. the tools. I go. There's five. There's six of you playing individually, and if we get four good scores, we'll have a good team. But I want you to try to beat one another. That means we're going to play better, and then you, yep. if you do, if you if you play hard, and they thought, and then they always talk about you know choking, right? And my, I love the word choking because they use this word choking, and I tell these kids, if I have six kids playing, I want to see every one of them choking because you know what what happens? What do you have to do if you're choking? You got to be you playing, playing well. well. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if you choke a couple of shots, exactly. give me 75, 75, exactly. 75, 75. Yeah. So you know what? If you and we all choke, it's yep. uh, you know, maybe that's a horrible word, but you know, choking, you know, you learn from choking. And like I said, it's good to be choking because that means you're playing well. Look at the, I mean, the best club pro uh, in our state ever, Mike Small, yep. right? He runs a, a fantastic program at U of I, one of the best in the country every single year. And he looks his kids right in the eye and says, beat me first. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, that's cool. Like, literally, like, one-on-one, beat me first, then beat that next guy. Like, the team dynamic comes from the competitive nature of that. And so it's a really good program, right, obviously, right. that he has that where it's focused on the individual, but but make sure you're beating the next guy right in front of you. Top Gun. He's got some good stuff Maverick. coming in, he told me, too. Top Gun Maverick was beat me first. top <laughs> three movies I've ever see seen in a theater. I have not seen it. Oh. Uh, ben... Ben was freaking out. Spending too had, much time at car shows. I have two movie <laughs> references so far now, and I that I was the first year at the theaters. That I was mean. the first time in a theater in four years for me, just because I don't see movies. I mean, I see them at home, but like I just yeah, don't yeah. go to movies. You have to go see that. Was night. the noise as cool? Like, like the first remember the first? It was one? everything, oh, dude. It was everything. I'm still I'm I'm on cloud nine right now. I saw it three times in less than 48 hours. <laughs> Did you feel like becoming a Scientologist, whatever that's called afterwards? No, or no? no I think he comes no. off really likable. It's like totally. I'm like, it's not the, that Tom Cruise. <laughs> you, right. I feel right. like you should literally. He's a great actor. We got to give him that. He is. He, How many great movies has he had over the years? You want to literally Quite hop, a bit. You want to hop in a pickup with the American the flag Illinois, right off the come. back and just, just rip it down the, down the street. <sighs> like that, that movie's so patriotic. It's awesome. It made me just, yeah. USA. It's great. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, USA and things happening this weekend, if we want to go that way, the Live Golf Tour, uh, what are your thoughts on that? I actually Vlad? don't know your opinion on it. Yeah. Um, do we have any Saudi Arabia listeners or no? <laughs> not, not I'll have yet. to check the map, okay, but I don't no. think so. All right. My opinion, you know, it's, it's funny because you hear all these different sides, right? And it's like, I mean, if you're a 20 or something year old kid coming up there and you can't make the tour and they're going to give you all this money to go out there and play, it's kind of hard to say no. I mean, this is. That's what you're saying, the Piat kid, the guy that went to the Piat kid, the kid, he can't, you know, he's like, I was talking to Small the other day because Mike goes, because Mike thinks it's, he goes, it's BS with these 54 hole. I mean, when you got your, these, um, what do you call it, shotgun starts. But he goes, and he got this Piat kid who's probably number six now in the Big Ten. He's out there making that money, and I said, "Well, that's at that age, you know, how do you say no? You know." And then you got the other guys that didn't expect him. They all they all made their dough. And Phil, God only knows where he's probably he probably needs the money because he probably owes. Yeah. But it's like <laughs> so now he's you know he's doing it just for the money. Let's not kid ourselves. But and then the point being, I understand where this you know blood money, this and that, you know. But I get the blood money, but like Norman did make a good point. He said there's 23 sponsors in the PGA Tour who do business with Saudi Arabia, okay? And don't we buy a bunch of, don't we get a bunch of oil from them too? Yeah, we're, we're as guilty as I mean, I mean, so we're why literally, are they, why we is, were literally there as a country right. begging them uh, to lower the gas prices. Right? So, I mean, I get it. I mean, I get it. And I understand both points, okay? I said, I, th- I said last time, it separate politics, take the politics completely out of it. Do you like the free agency aspect of golf? And then two, do you share the opinion that I have that 
the reason I don't like it necessarily is because I want to see the best players all together. Correct. It's the structure, right? So it's it's not a four round tournament. You know what I mean? It's not you know the tee times, the guys, the, all the leaders teeing off second. It's none of that. You know, it's just it's it's just so it's just going to be different. It's kind of exhibition is what it really is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an exhibition golf because then I guess there's a team concept that I really don't quite understand either. Yeah, there's 12 teams of four golfers. Yeah. So you got and the new additions this this event is, you know, Brooks Kepka, uh Patrick Reed and then Bryson DeChambeau. So Brooks is playing with his brother on his team. So right. it's just it's one of those things where I think people are going to go to it. This is the first one. They're going to go to a soil rich harvest, but I mean, the Saudis, you know, they bought Formula One, and after two or three years, whatever, mm-hmm. they kind of got bored with that, you know, and then whatever else they owned, like something with soccer, like, and now with golf, you know, they'll get bored with it after two or three years. I mean, because they, they can't make all this is they can't make money off this. It's it's basically just trying to take golf and bring it into their country, you know. Even though it's, are they even playing in Saudi Arabia? Is it all? No, no, no. <laughs> right. It's just no. it's all over the world, right? Yeah, but. I don't know. We've been we've been doing it for years. The PGA Tour plays in China. You think Saudi Arabia is bad? Go to China, right? Like, <laughs> come on, their politics and everything else. Come on. So, yeah, I, I think my my biggest thing is that all the best talent. I would like to see them together. I don't like that pot diluted. I don't like it. I don't like it spread out. But and the thing, well, well and then the only thing too is, you, but can you, it, can a PGA Tour player play in a European Tour event? Yeah, throughout the year. Yeah. So I mean, so if they can jump over there, I mean, well, why didn't just you know whatever just go make your money for eight weeks? Yeah, they don't. Have, they don't have. They have to hold membership on the PGA Tour. We're playing a minimal number of events, and they can only play in. I think it's like six events, six outside. European Tour events yeah. outside of it. But I mean, they could have definitely had softer parameters. I I think honestly, if the PGA Tour was being honest with everybody, and and I think he finally was in his recent press conference. They're scared of what it meant for the money aspect of things, right? They are now have to start actually pl- paying the players what the players deserve. Yeah, how much money do you think is in their award chest? Oh, my God. Billions. I mean, with billions. A B, with a and this B. is the one thing I care stuff, too. Norman feels like he got screwed by the PGA Tour, so this is him just trying to stick it back yeah, at him. I mean, what's that? Sh- shout out to uh, one of our members, Vic. He made a great point. He goes, nobody realizes, but he, the Saudis are basically buying the PGA Tour on the cheap. Right, because like, what's the PGA Tour probably worth? If if you were to, as a whole entity, you're probably thinking fifteen, twenty billion, right? And they're doing this whole thing for two or three billion, and still getting the best players, right? Getting the best right? players, so right? They're, maybe they're just trying to recreate the tour on the cheap. Um, I, I thought that was a interesting. That's point. That's a really but, good point. But the the cool aspect about the tour, and that I think is being glossed over right now, is the fact that every dollar that's Given as prize money on the tour, an equal dollar is given to charity. And right now, I'm not seeing that on Live Tour at all. And mm-hmm. that's that's not a it's not a great look. It's not a great aspect. So those guys better get on board. That's actually that a great point. Yes. Act, and if they do every that, single that's going to help bring them. Right. That, that'll actually help more players come. Right. So every single dollar that gets raised on the PJ Tour, half of it's split to charity, half it's split to the purse. It's interesting marketing for the Live Golf Tour. They say golf, but louder. Welcome to Live Golf, where we supercharge the game of golf and help transform it into the sport it's destined to become. A little audacious for being only broadcast on YouTube. Right. Yep. No, exactly. That's going to have to change for well, them. Well, the whole thing, the world ranking stuff, you know, it's, it's got to be 72 holes. That's everything. You know? that's, I, I so, think that's everything. If guys so, aren't getting world ranking points, these guys' egos, Brooks wants to be number one in the world, and all these guys want to be number one in the world still. They don't. If they're not able to to keep that moniker or get get points for this, you're going to see them drifting back to the tour. Right. If the and tour will let them. Well, let them. That's going to be a thing, too. So will they allow them to? Dude. Dustin Johnson comes knocking. Hello. Can I get back in? You're going to let them back They're going to draw a hard line, yeah. but it'll be interesting to see how they handle it. There will be some type of suspension. It'll be a but, fine yeah. or something. Right. Brooks doesn't want to work anyways. Come on. He's like, oh, I'll take this tournament off. I'll, this is See perfect. who he lives with, don't you? I don't know if he needs them. <laughs> I can't imagine Paulina being the model wife either, or mom. <laughs> right. It's just me. She Sorry. might be a fantastic She's mom. She's a model, but not a model mom. <laughs> oh, man. Did you see uh, Freddie Couples come out and talk about Phil and how he's like, I'll probably never talk to him ever again. I don't what? need to. 
Oh, he, listen to Freddie. He's what on a Stenson. He's on a different orbit. <laughs> Stenson might toss out his uh, captaincy of the of the Ryder Cup. That's that's to go the, play. That's the rumor. Wow, that's the rumor. Well, because we don't know some of these guys' financial situations. There's guys like you remember VJ Swing who had some horrible, horrible decisions money wise back in the day. So I think you know a big part of this is uh, it. It is the money. What's not kidding? You know, our system, Bobby, who just like my God. <laughs> Oh, first time know. he's been active on Twitter, and now he's active every day. Right, now he's active tour. every tour day. Guy. Yeah, big live tour <laughs> guy. Know, he acts like he doesn't wear the live tour number one troll. Blue shirts to <laughs> to to work, but he does. <laughs> no, Bobby's been very vocal. Yeah, speaking out against. Well, the because he 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 lives his life through T Dub, and T Dub looks like a champ here now because he's saying, you know what, blah 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 blah. So a lot, some of the Tiger Woods haters are probably now loving the fact that Tiger's telling them, especially him, if they offered him between nine hundred and over a billion, right? Just, just to, to sit join in, up, sit in a cart. But he was, I mean, he's making a billion just on retirement fund through the PGA Tour. Back when that's saying so he was, they said he was going to be the first billion billionaire because back in the day, you know, once they made a cut, every time they made a cut, they put I think it was thirty five hundred or five thousand into their annuity, and if they Jeez. won the tournament, they put in thirty thousand. I just kind of that's think about all that that's been coming up, all the oh. cuts he's made, all the tournaments he's made. <sighs> that alone is going to be over a billion dollars by the time he's able to get into Jeez. the annuity. So I mean, hey, let's bring this thing back on the tracks. I want to get back to teaching. What's the uh, what's the worst tip you've ever given, or a tip that you gave for a long time that ended up being awful? I thought that was so remember when we saw was it weeks or somebody like that said that at the PGA show. I thought that was the funniest thing ever. Yeah, he goes, man, I I gave this tip wrong for so long, so long. I think as I look at it. Now, the way we talk about how we use the ground force and everything in your golf swing. Yeah. So back in the day, it was always kind of like, and I learned this through my mentor, Doc, who's awesome. But I, a lot of what I used to do is try to get people, everybody to finish into their left heel, right? Like get your left heel, left heel, left heel right away. Like right heel, left ball, left heel, be right before impact. Well, as we're seeing nowadays, the more you can really push off that left foot and that left heel foot coming off the ground a little bit, not crazy, but and getting that hip cleared out, that's how you create more power. Yeah. Getting into that left heel right away was not going to create any power. There's a few guys out there that do it, but not many. So was it more of like a, a Jimmy Ballard move back in the day where it was kind of more of like a slide in right. the left more side? Right, more of a slide, kind of like. You know, how my golf swing was, oh, that was more of a slide getting in there. You know, nowadays guys are getting that left knee, obviously separating, getting ahead of the hip. And you then, said like you back in the day, like the fake turn and yeah, fake, fake, turn, fake turn slide. And then that <laughs> reverse C <laughs> with the bell bottoms on. And the <laughs> but that was probably the one that I taught so much all the time was that position right there. What, how is, you know what, the one thing for me that seems like it's evolved, especially over the last eight years is, is the chipping motion. Mm-hmm. Did, were you an active, like, put it behind your back foot, stab down? Kind of, yeah. Little, Remember little back jammers. in the day there? Yeah. I mean, obviously, Roger Cleveland. Hinge and hold. He told us a lot. There's a reason why they have bounce in the, in the wedges. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Use it, you know? Yeah. And so back, like, what Annie's talking about is... Now, if you get somebody who's really, really bad, they, they can't really use the bounce for the most part. So you got to give them to kind of get the hands forward and just try to roll it up there but that's kind of how we were taught back in the day where now as Andy we all talk about you know 60 40 kind of in your left heel use the bounce coming slide, through and more of a slide keep action it belly tight shallow. Your belly. yeah I mean it personally helped my chipping out immensely to be honest with you it's like yeah it's completely changed I don't I, th I think I'm better now than I was chipping before but mm -hmm. Definitely, it's completely different. I mean, and the flat left wrist thing back in the day, you know, I didn't mind cupping, but if I can get somebody with a flatter left wrist at the top, we don't need to be Dustin Johnson or John Rahm or Maura Coward who got that big bow with the or flexion. You know, cause the, that's the thing that's changed a lot too is terms. Yeah. You know, used to be called early extension. Now it's this and that. Now you got all these internet guys who know everything and yeah. they're Track changing manuals. all these Track terms. Manuals. You know, and it's like. Yeah. Jesus, like early release. Well, what's early release? Well, you know, it's actually casting the club. What's casting the club? It's like, Jesus, I can't even talk to these there guys. Was a, there was a video of Ledbetter when Feldo was number one in the world. Ledbetter talking about he wanted Feldo to keep a cupped left wrist all the way basically down into impact. And it's like, now? Now, he maybe he was saying that because maybe he was too much bowed or something. Yep. So he maybe felt like he was doing that, you yep. know. But that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. The... Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna name drop right here. Frank was just smirking at us through the window. 
Um, of the studio. Yeah, of the studio. Sorry, of the studio. You're right. Um, Tom Watson, when I got the chance to play with him last year, total name drop. That's that's like a name drop from <laughs> There should be a building. bell for every time there's a right. name drop. He right. loves this name drop, but he's got okay. some good stories. So it's a good story, though. Tom Watson did three or four things wrong in his golf swing for now's teaching, but he was the best ball striker ever for a good 10-year period. Right. Cupped left first at the top. Right. Slid kind of into his left side. Early extended badly. Right, right hip went way towards the golf ball and then had his back to the target, head down, and would kind of flip his hands through. Uh, his his amount of face rotation had to be Crazy. 180 degrees Crazy. from waist high to waist high, over 180 degrees. I mean, he had the best hands. I mean, then Phil took that over after a while because Phil, I mean, his swing is... <laughs> Yeah, it's nasty. Yeah, but. you could say that Phil and Tom's is actually similar from right. the opposite sides. Both very upright, very arc golf swings. But he's he's a good example, and, and I I don't know if this is um, getting kind of into the teaching enough that at least I see is like there's different strokes for different folks, man. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the great, literally, the one of the greatest ball strikers of all time did it wrong, right. technically wrong, right. Right. And it's based on body types. You know, you try to fill in body types, but you're right. There's certain guys that that just goes back to being a golf athlete. There's just guys who are great athletes so, at golf. So my question is like, when do you, when do you touch them? When do you leave them alone? Well, you leave them alone when you see score. If they're scoring well with, yeah. with a, with a golf swing, then you just kind of say, okay, now we're, we're just going to kind of work and just <laughs> bandaid it. You don't want to do it because you don't want to mess with it too much. You know what I mean? And then, then what you do is if you see somebody though whose golf game is kind of lost, mm -hmm. then it's got to be reconstructed sometimes. And I guess Patrick Harrington did that this past year. I guess he's been reconstructing it for yeah. two years, and lo and behold, he just said he just won the Senior U.S. Open. So, so interesting story, I would say of of like your students. I, I've we've been around. You've been around Ricky since he was little, mm -hmm. right? Ricky Costello. It's an interesting evolution of how he's he's come about. I saw him through high school. You've now continued to see him now. And you guys made like a pretty major change in the last year. What what kind of would bring something like that about? The kid's a stud, right? Stud, but he had problems where he just he just made too many. He made way too many bogeys along with all the birdies always make, right? And he had a kind of a shut face, cross at the top, you know, and this kind of come down, just bomb it. And then that way there, the driver was going all over the place. Okay, so... He needed to find a way, and then he also had a shut face to an open face chipping, mm -hmm. which I think our dome back in the day with those little metal things didn't help. Disaster. <laughs> right. So anyway, he came He came to me, and he said, listen, we have to get the wedge thing straightened out, which is he's kind of getting the face open using the bounce. And we said, Ricky, you said, listen, you're so strong. Get a neutral, neutral grip. Let's get the club. Feel like it's laid off and get it square at the top. And I'm telling you, his swing like right now is just it looks so good. It's, yeah, it's perfect. It looks so good. I mean, the poor, he – was in the John Deere qualifier and five under got in the playoff. Six got in, and he shot four under with a triple quad. like on his thirteenth hole. Yeah. And yeah. he goes, "Well, I thought I had to get aggressive." I said, "Well, you don't need to be aggressive at four under with six to go." Right? So <laughs> yeah. change let him, that. Let it come to you. Yeah, let it come to you. But and he's uh, his second professional event. You know, he went eagle birdie, and then he buried the first playoff hole, and he went five thousand dollars. You know. No. Yeah, I was trying to win $2,700 and I was feeling all kind of nervous. I mean, so it's like that kind of goes on and on. So I like, I like his attitude. Um, you know, I just hope he has the resources to kind of keep doing it for a while. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. sometimes that resources are not easy in the game of golf. All right. Best round you ever played? Best round I ever played was at Skokie Country Club. The, the, um, Record was 65 by Clark Burroughs at the time. It was on a Monday with a couple of pros from India, from uh, Wisconsin. I played these Cleveland Voss irons because my clubs, I forgot. Oh, I love those Cleveland clubs. Voss irons, I a graphite shaft with a cash-in putter, which now is their f f uh, backside. The front side, I shot 31, five under with, um, uh, with two eagles. That made all pars on the back, and I went birdie, birdie, finish. Shoot 65 to tie the record. So that was my best round, I think, ever playing something like that. I've never had, like, the 62s and 61s, like, Woodruff doesn't count and stuff like yeah. that. But it's like, you know, but at a real golf course and the record was only 65, that was my best. All right. Favorite golf course ever? 
Like yeah, that you played. That I've played. There's one down at um uh what am I thinking over there? Um Sea Island. It's called Frederica. Oh yeah. Frederica is so nice. It's a lot of the tour the cl- the tour players that live yeah, down yeah. there all play out of there and they kind of set up like Augusta. So it's really fun to play the month before Augusta because it's all set up and it's all cut like Augusta. Favorite J Town course. Favorite Drake Town course. Well, it's got to be the. I mean, I grew up on all three of them. Yeah. But I worked at the one, which was called JPCC, <laughs> which is now called Inwood National, which I kind of <laughs> take claim for. I call it Inwood National. Our league gets taken to a whole new level with merchandise and everything else. But that's my favorite Drake Town one. Favorite hole on JPCC. My favorite hole at JPCC. Oh man, there's not too many good ones there. That's the only thing. <laughs> That's the problem. I, I shouldn't say not too many good ones, not too many memorable ones, because they changed the course yeah. from when I was there. But I thought the favorite one is that little par three, the par four, the second hole, which now it's the course is actually still going, but the water shut down because they're redoing the island green. Yeah, yeah. I think it's one of the cooler holes around, so I kind of like that. My worst hole in the Joy Golf Course is old 13 at, at Wedgwood. The tournament that you won the Joy oh, Amateur dude, a couple of times. That, that par that three. so good. Yeah, so good. But it's my so nickname, hard. my nickname by all the all the um, uh, superintendent Riff. guys oh, okay. was numbers because there was <laughs> two out of my three years that I played it as a college player. I'm near the lead and I yank it out of bouncer twice and make double and triple. <laughs> so that hole they can blow up. <laughs> Jeez, I uh, yeah, that gosh, that hole. <laughs> no, real quick, it's summertime. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to cook or eat during the summer? You're a big Platts Pies pizza guy. A big Platts Pizza guy, and it's kind of more or less in the wintertime and whatnot. But my go-to, my go-to is that, well, I, I kind of do wings a little bit because I know how they do them at McQuethy's now, <laughs> all right? Okay. But I'm a rib guy, man. I love those ribs. ribs. I try I try, to, I try to do it a different way every time, but I have a new toy. I recommend everyone. I don't think Blackstone's going to pay me, but you need a Blackstone grill. Oh, that yeah, with is the flat top? Dolly Llama. Really? Yes. Black uh, top, you can do... You could do breakfast on there, and you could do dinner on there. It's unbelievable. Did it's you get it at Menards with your mulch? No, actually, um, we found a way. I got it through like Wayfair for like two hundred dollars <laughs> off. So usually like nice. four thirty. We went to we nice. went. We got it for like two thirty. It was perfect. What's nice. the best wing method? A rib method. You got. I know you were gonna wrap this up, but I'm just. I'm curious. I kind of like it where I kind of put them in the oven. I kind of put all these different sauces. I put the foil on them. Do it right there, mm-hmm. and then I'll bring it out. To the grill. Finish so I'm off. kind of a small, fall off the rib type of guy. A lot of guys do this rib where they do it for three hours in the smoker and this yeah. and that. I ain't got that time for that. You know, just do it for about two hours inside the oven at 350. All wrapped up with a certain sauce, so we can't give that out. Of course. And then when you put it out there, <laughs> then it's just it's money. Love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was fun. You got it, man. I'll yeah. see you guys. What episode 30 or we, 60? We, I mean? we might bring you back in before that. Maybe we'll, 60. We'll bring you back. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Platt. Thanks, thank guys. you, everyone else, for listening. We'll see you next time. In the car. Right at us. The best in the business, Roger Cleveland. Can't wait to get back to Chicago in this one. This is Party of Four. 